Techno Camon 20 Pro is arguably one of the best mid-range phones to arrive since the Redmi Note 10 Pro. If you have a budget of under 12,000 pesos and want a substantial upgrade in performance with little compromises in other areas, this is probably the phone to get as of now. So far, my experience using this phone has been very good. But I definitely see the challenges of delivering a good product to the masses if you are a young competitor. At least in the mid-range market where you get to compete with the likes of Xiaomi, Poco, Oppo and other Chinese manufacturers. For the past two years, we have seen these companies slowly creeping up in pricing, leaving the budget mid-range segment open for new competition. That's where Techno Camo 20 Pro 5G comes in. For 11,999 pesos, you are getting a large 120Hz AMOLED display, 64 megapixel with optical image stabilization, 256GB storage with 8GB of RAM, a headphone jack that supports FM radio, and a 5000mAh battery. Powering the entire device is the new Dimensity 8050 from MediaTek. Well, not entirely new because this is a rebranded Dimensity 1200 from 2021. But it's probably the most powerful chip in this segment if we're talking about the price point of this device. And you have probably seen the benchmarks. The chipset inside this phone is just sitting below the Snapdragon 870 in both single core and multi core CPU performance. But where it really pulls ahead is in graphics processing. In Geekbench OpenCL, it scored a whopping 5337 versus 3542 of a Poco F3. However, synthetic benchmarks don't tell the whole story. In the real world, the Dimensity 8050 that's running on the Camon 20 Pro 5G performs a bit worse in extended heavy workloads due to the lack of better cooling management. After playing Honkai Star Rail for at least 15 minutes in medium settings at 60 frames, the phone got very warm and started throttling. The phone can't produce consistent 50 to 60 frames gameplay without dropping or skipping frames. It's not that the game was unplayable or unbearable, but if this was something like Genshin Impact that involves a lot of active inputs from the player and the game started slowing down in the middle of a heated battle, that could get annoying. On the flip end, the throttling occurs in a spiky manner, meaning the game immediately plays back at high frame rates. Fortunately, this doesn't happen with older titles like Mobile Legends even at maxed graphics and frame rate. Despite its warm state, the game stayed above 60 frames. Techno needs to do a better job in heat management next time when it comes to the Camon 20 Pro 5G because I haven't seen this level of issue from like, what, 3 years ago? As for the software though, this is where you start to see the characteristics of a new competitor. For the past few years, Techno hasn't been seen as a camera or software-centric company. Personally speaking, I see them thriving in two ways to occupy market share, and those are low pricing and eye-catching design. So as expected, iOS 13 that's based on Android 13 needs a bit more polishing and cleaning up. Let me start with the good things first. Okay, so for the most part, the UI is now closer to stock Android than ever. Although they have not adopted Pixel's theme engine, at least they support the modern style widgets. I like the fact that HiOS maintains that 120Hz refresh rate most of the time, whether it's switching to another app or gliding through pages while having a live wallpaper in the background. I also like that there are a lot of features in the settings like Smart Panel for calling a quick group of apps that you can open in window mode. There are also dedicated panels when you're watching a video or playing a game, which lets you disable notifications among others. iOS even lets you take advantage of all the refresh rates from 60Hz to adaptive 120Hz, and home screens support gestures for quick shortcuts so you don't have to download a third-party launcher for that. All that is good and all, and I think it's great to see Techno offering features that users actually want to use. Now that's the good side of it. Here's the not so good side of it. For starters, the notification tray looks undecided. You have the upper half in an iOS like style and then you have the lower half in an old Android style. Personally, I found the placing of the toggles all over the place. Also, iOS doesn't have that fluidity in its animation. Normally, once you touch the display and move your finger, the display would immediately respond and follow your touch. Here, the software would wait for you to finish your gesture, maybe it's a swipe up or swipe down before it takes action. It didn't feel right to me when waiting for the phone to respond, 
it felt like there was a delay and that's something you wouldn't want to see from a phone packed with performance. I also encountered frequent hangups in both Facebook and Messenger apps. Weirdly, it's only with those two apps so an update from Mark might fix the problem, but for now, that has been my situation. But the biggest issue that I have with iOS, particularly with the Cam 20 Pro 5G, is the inability to properly function while in picture-in-picture -picture mode. So I watch a lot of YouTube videos in window mode, and regardless of the resolution I'm playing it, the entire phone will just bug down and slow down. I think most of these are fixable by software updates, but hopefully Techno does a better job next time because I think they are onto something here. I love their UI and its features, but they just need to polish it. The rest though are pretty good, so with the in-display fingerprint scanner isn't as fast as side-mounted scanners, but it's surprisingly accurate and decently fast. The stereo speakers are one of the best in this price range, including the more expensive miniature ones. So while the rest of the industry is saving costs in the audio department, Techno is keeping the quality at a good standard. The speakers are sufficiently loud and don't get overpowered by ambient noise. There's a decent amount of bass, but it's really the mids or the frequency of speech making any speech-heavy content easy to hear. The haptic feedback. Well, it's not good. It's just buzzy vibration. The 5000mAh battery is large enough to last you an entire full day if you don't game a lot. I average 6 hours without gaming, but if you do intend to play games, that might put your screen time to 4 to 5 hours. And that's not a lot by today's standard, especially with the 33 watt charger in your box. I had to wait an hour and 15 minutes to go from 20% to 100%. On the flip end though, you can extend the lifespan of the battery itself by turning on smart charging in the settings which trickle charge the Cabin 20 Pro 5G to 100% in the morning. And now, we have the cameras. There are three optics here, one 64 megapixel and two 2 megapixel for macro and depth. There's no ultra-wide camera, which is a bummer, but I had a realization. For the past year, I've noticed that the main camera is wide enough for what most people need. Although it's nice to have an ultra-wide perspective, but when the quality is subpar, I find myself switching to the main camera and getting satisfied with the field of view. I guess that's just to give you something to think about. Either way, I don't mind this phone using an ultra-wide sensor simply because I am satisfied with a 64 megapixel sensor here. And this isn't your typical 64 megapixel sensor. It's a Samsung RGBW type of sensor that adds a white color filter to images for better low light imaging. So, for the most part, the images I get from this camera are solid. More often than not, the images look sharp and colorful. But what really stood out to me is the bokeh or subject separation you get from the 1.65 aperture. This camera has a certain look, and thanks to that fast and wide aperture, the subject in focus is really sharp and the background blur is really pronounced. You do have to watch out for close-up subjects as the plane of focus of a wide aperture is really narrow, so the bigger part of an image is out of focus. I also think this camera app from Techno has one of the most responsive shutters among Android devices, making moving objects easier to capture. The camera app is also big in AI, so as soon as you point to something, you will notice words appear in the app, so it's applying smart scene recognition based on the subject for the best image quality. It works great, but there are times when I think that there's too much processing going on that Techno forgets to straighten out some wrinkles. For example, some parts of the photos are smudgy. Not out of focus, just smudgy. Other times, you would think you got a perfect shot, but once it processed the image, the result was disappointing. I think there's too much AI stuff happening here, but I hope this gets ironed out since I like most of the shots I get from the main sensor. The 32 megapixel selfie is impressive as well if you are a fan of bright and smoothing out selfies, but I do like the sharp quality of it, and I think it's one of the better selfie cameras in this price range. And just like the main camera, there are a lot of AI enhancements here like built-in makeup filters, skin smoothening, eye enlargement, basically all the cosmetic applications that you can think of. Night mode on the main camera isn't something to write home about. It does make the image bright, but the overall quality isn't clean, which is unfortunate given the capabilities of the hardware. Videos though are not as impressive, so the main camera can record up to 4K at 30 frames without stabilization, which is typical for the price of this phone, but I don't see the OIS kicking in even at 1080p. It's still shaky and janky, and I am not happy with the quality of the video here at 1080p. The colors, exposure, and contrast are just all over the place. And it seems to me that OIS only works in ultra steady mode. Techno has gotta fix this in the next software patches, hopefully. At the very least, the selfie camera is a different story. 
It records up to 1440p at 30 frames, again with no stabilization, but at lower resolutions, the quality is acceptable. Last but definitely not least is the design. I am digging the design of the Gamma 20 Pro 5G. I love the vegan leather backing with the black color. There is a good amount of geometry here from the camera cutout to the engravings that include the name of the phone. Additionally, the camera cutout is large and reflective enough to be used as a mirror. And there are four LED flashes underneath the diffuser making this one of the brightest I've tested. What's more is that there are two flashes up front to give you a boost in lighting when taking selfies in low light conditions, so that's neat. But the square frame really feels and looks like glossy metal. They said it was plastic, but I honestly thought it was metal. Although I rocked this phone caseless, I must say that a hybrid hard jelly case is of good quality. Oh, and the front bezels are almost symmetrical if not for the ever so slightly large top bezel. Oh yeah right, the display. So it's a 6.67 inches AMOLED capable of 500 nits but boosts to nearly 700 nits outdoors in auto mode. You do have to turn the toggle on for that in the display setting, but brightness wise, it's enough to make the screen visible in broad daylight. Although it lacks support for Dolby Vision, I have no problems reviewing Dolby Vision supported content on Netflix. I wouldn't say that this is one of the best displays in this price range, but it's an AMOLED screen, so it's expected to be colorful and beautiful with wide viewing angles. No complaints here. But basically, that's the Techno Camon 20 Pro 5G. Should you buy it? I think so. You do have to watch out for the cons of this device, but if those cons don't affect your daily use, this phone is just fine. It's not as polished as the competition, but Techno has something special going on here. Hopefully, they improve every release because we could be looking at the next Redmi killer. So that's it for this one. Drop us all our like if you feel like supporting the channel. And as always, until the next one, stay safe. Thank you.